I find myself still in the halcyon days of uh, fatherhood where I can still beat my kids at every single board game we play. And the latest one that my oldest son has gotten into is chess. So right now I'm living the dream, winning every round. But there will come a day in the future, and you will probably all hear, hear me talk about this when I inevitably lose and toss the board and storm away in tears and uh, completely surrender my dignity. Welcome to Rumble Book Club. I'm your host, Mike Hernandez, and this is the show where a normal guy like me can talk about interesting books I've read, old and new, good and bad. So if you like the show, you like the content, you like the books that I talk about, or maybe I just have a punchable face, whatever keeps you clicking, foo, you can follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Parler, or you can subscribe right down below on Rumble and YouTube. But more importantly, be a part of the conversation. Help this channel grow, share these videos with your friends, and comment. Let me know if there's uh, something you liked in the video, something you didn't like. Uh, maybe uh, you just want to tell me I have a punchable face. Today we're going to take a look at an awesome book that I read a couple years back and I'm, I'm glad I'm finally getting, getting around to sharing it with you. Today we're going to take a look at Stephen King's Under the Dome. This is the fascinating and disturbing depiction of what happens to a small town when you lock them in place and crank up the social pressure to the highest degree. So let's get into our three-part criteria of the book starting off with the aesthetics, how it looks, how it feels, how it pops off the shelf, then the readability. Uh, how a normal person like me can read it intellectually and physically how it's put together then we'll finally look at the contents what you're actually getting from cover to cover what the story is like or what the information's like so let's start off with the aesthetics I have here a, a paperback reprinting that was printed several years after it was in the initial printing I love the darkness of the cover and the primary use of, of black and the sunset gold here. You see a small town divided by a glass-like bubble. Uh, the, I do kind of like the fact that the title and author is kind of a reverse situation. You have a very prominent author and then the title is more subtle. So I think for big artists or big authors like Stephen King, you can kind of get away with that a little bit. I don't like quotes on covers that's just something that i don't like but nonetheless it's a very strong cover eight out of ten now looking at the readability stephen king is very good at setting his stage to give you everything you need for immersion into the story he's conversational and casual in his use of language but varies in the use of language depending on the character of whose mind he's exploring the story starts up immediately and has a slight bit of lulling towards uh, the close of the middle you start to it starts to draw a little bit as far as how you're reading it but it does pick up really quick and finds its pace back towards the the back end of the book as far as physically you've got off-white pages with big clear font and good margins always a strong showing from king on the readability nine out of ten now getting into the content we go on a wild ride when a small town in maine go figure with stephen king is closed off from the rest of the world in one moment as a mysterious transparent dome descends around the town. You get a vicious look at the initial carnage that might happen as people are immediately surprised and then figure out how to adjust to this otherworldly presence. What's more frightening than the dome itself is the people under it. While we witness one group of people that are trying to operate as best as possible and help those around them as the resources begin to dwindle and their air begins to sour due to wind not being able to pass through the dome, Others have more sinister agendas. What King does a great job with here is calling out the fact, and actually predicting, considering the year we've just had in real life, uh, predicting the fact that even before a crisis, there's always petty tyrants in positions of local authority who are always waiting in the wings to grab as much control as they possibly can. They're corrupt, they're divisive, and they're absolutely mad with any kind of power they can they can achieve. In addition to that, the town, as we find out, has a dark side to many of its inhabitants that was present long before the dome fell, and we see the problems and flaws of each character get exacerbated by the stress in the brimming disaster. This is an action-packed book. Uh, you can definitely tell Stephen King's kind of political biases and, and how he describes some of the more uh, politically minded characters, but nonetheless, doesn't matter which side of the aisle you're on, it's a fun read, it's an action-packed read, it's a great story, 
Uh, it should be on everyone's bookshelf. As far as the content goes, it's a perfect score, 10 out of 10. I found this book at Barnes & Noble. You can find this book. It... You jerk. I... <laughs> I found this book at Barnes & Noble. You can find it at your local bookstore, and if all else fails, and it won't fail because you're bound to find this sucker, you can go to Amazon or eBay to find it. The book is Under the Dome by Stephen King. Go out and get yourself a copy. Thanks for watching, everybody, and go read something.